I really think it's almost become an inarguable fact at this point that the Persona series has some truly outstanding art. So with the recent release of Persona 3 Reload, I naturally really wanted to learn how we could draw illustrations like this too as a beginner artist. So I decided to break down a few of the artworks done in the Persona 3 Reload art style to hopefully be able to uncover the secrets of their delightful colors, amazing shading and unique proportions to finally attempt to draw my very own Persona inspired illustration, along with showing you all how you could do the same. So to understand the techniques Shimada uses to draw these character illustrations a little better, I decided to start by breaking down his Makoto drawing. I'll be mainly using Clip Studio Paint for this study, but you can basically do the exact same thing I'll be doing in any other drawing software. Since I in the start wanted the results to be as accurate as possible, I started by just yoinking the line art directly from the original drawing. Now I'll get back to how you can draw the anatomy and proportions later, but a few key things I noticed about the Persona art style is the use of relatively small eyes, along with how nose and mouth generally leaning a bit more into semi my realism too. Now for the line art itself, the outline of the character are generally much thicker than the ones on the inside, with some additional pressure applied around some other key parts like the facial structure, headphones, and inner parts of the hair. So next I just added the flat colors, and when drawing in a style and notice that the base colors usually reside around the middle of the color wheel, with a tendency for the hue to lean slightly towards the bluer side of things. And with the darker colors like black and gray usually being super dark to create a sharp contrast to the brighter colors. Now starting with the most important important part, namely the shading, I decided to begin by just filling out the main bulk of the shadow on the face. And since the light source for all the Persona 3 Reload illustrations are typically really strong, it creates very defined areas of shadows like you can see here. You'll also notice how in the style even the full volume of the lips are supposed to come through, since the shadows bends around the extrusion of the lower lip. Every hard shadow is also separated by a more saturated terminator line, which really makes the illustration pop, in addition to just having a warmer shadow around the nose and mouth, which I'm pretty sure is just caused by the density of blood vessels being higher there. Next I just quickly did the eyes, which was super simple compared to a lot of other art styles, since it mainly just consisted of a darker shadow around the eyes, along with an upper shadow with a zigzag pattern, a darker more saturated terminator line to separate the light and dark areas, and lastly a basic soft light on top of the eyes and another shadow terminator line on the scale area. And now as a finishing touch for the face, I just had to add an extra source of an even darker shadow, along with adding a softer gradient to the face, especially around areas that would now actually be a lot darker like the neck hair. I then swiftly moved on to the hair which at this point just looked like an extremely convoluted scary mess. But breaking it down wasn't even all that bad to my surprise. Now the character illustrations for this game seem to mainly have two light sources, where one is directly behind them which creates these small shadows you can see around the edges of the character. With that in mind the hair can mainly be broken down into these stages. A hard shadow going around all the banks of the hair in addition to the top of the head, a light source going around the crown to head in addition to at the very sides where the second light source is hitting. Now as a beginner artist I was a bit unsure what the best way to achieve whatever the spiky effect in the highlights was, but after experimenting with it I figured out that I could just highlight the rough areas of the light with a normal G pen, then just use the finger submerge tool to create the spiky effect, plus just using a normal eraser to make the light fade out at the end. If you're not using Clip Studio Paint for this you could also achieve the exact same effect in Photoshop by just using the basic finger submerge tool. And finally I just added a dark gradient around the edges of the hair, and another lighter gradient in the middle, and that's the hair completed. It honestly looked a lot scary when I first saw it, but it turned out it wasn't all that bad. And then I basically just repeated the basic techniques I just mentioned to quickly finish shading the clothes and hands, with the most important note being to remember to add a gradient for light fall off, for areas being illuminated, and the terminator lines. Now before moving on to my own attempt, there's a couple of really interesting things to note here. The first being that the backlight is most likely a solid light blue color, which is why these parts aren't white and gray like the rest of the drawing. With the other big elephant in the room I was pondering about for a long time was why is this light shaped like this? Now I honestly still have no idea what the reasoning behind it is other than just the illustration being supposed to be set in a more natural lighting scenario, where there might be something of a similar inverted shape blocking the light. But who knows? So yeah, that's about it for the breakdown of the McCoy illustration, and here's my attempt next to the real one. I now felt like I'd acquired the knowledge to finally be able to create my very own Persona 3 character art, which actually turned out pretty good in the end. But the burning question now was who should I draw? Well I decided since Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth just came out and Tifa has in that occasion been trending, it would be pretty funny to draw her in the Persona 3 Reload art style. It also just felt right to celebrate the launch of two incredible JRPGs right after each other with this crossover. Starting with 
with my attempt, I just begin by setting up a 3D model with the pose I wanted to use. And I went with a pretty casual arms on hips pose, which I later realized was extremely similar to Mitsuru's key art pose. But oh well, I then just quickly sketched out the general pose and started working on the face. Now like I quickly mentioned earlier in the video, the key features of the persona style when it comes to the face is a semi-realistic nose, mouth and comparatively small eyes compared to the regular anime art style. So with all that in mind, I just drew the facial features and it looked very meh. I didn't exactly know why it looked so bad at the time either, so I just decided to move on to the clothes and hair for now, which luckily turned out a little bit better. I even drew a cute little hairband flower. And with the foundation now set, I just had to go back and fix the extremely weird looking face. So I quickly just did a breakdown of Yukari's facial proportions along with her eye shapes to see what Tifa was missing. And yeah, it's becoming super obvious looking back that the main issues were that the right eyes wasn't properly aligned with the left eye, and the left eye weren't even in perspective at all, so I quickly fixed that by rescaling and moving the right eye slightly up and redrawing the left eye to align with the perspective of the face. I also decided to slightly redraw the nose and mouth, and yeah, this already looks way better than it did before. I also redrew the hair following Oridez's amazing hair tutorial to make it look a little more three-dimensional, in addition to adding the straps going around her arms and body. And that was more or less the sketching phase done and dusted. So now I just had to do the line art keeping the things mentioned earlier in the video in mind, meaning it was now finally time for coloring and shading, which is really gonna make make or break this piece. When breaking down the McCoy illustrations earlier, I mentioned how I think the colors were approximately picked. So I just pulled up the reference picture of Arif, took her color palette and then just gave it a slightly more blue hue, along with moving the saturation of the colors a little over to the middle of the color selector. I wish I had the art terminology down better to explain the exact nuanced reasoning why all these choices were made, but for now that explanation will have to suffice because it luckily worked out pretty well I think. So now moving on to the shading, I yet again started by blocking out the bigger shadow regions on the face, along with quickly filling out the eyes as a gradient. Anyways, I decided to hide the shadow layer and quickly draw a lipstick, using a combination of a hard brush and a soft brush giving it a more faded and realistic look. So again, like the Makoda drawing, I added a slightly darker shadow around the neck area and places where light would have a hard time reaching like under the hair, and gave the nose a more red tinted shadow. Next up on the list was hair, and I started by roughly blocking out the areas that would be in shadow, which in this lighting scenario would be on the top section of the head along the bangs and directly behind the head. Next up was just adding highlights around the crown using the same technique mentioned earlier along with a few light and dark gradients, covering the rest of the hair underneath the main shadow and light layers. With the hair done I just did some very basic shadows for the rest of the skin, before adding a big shadow on the tank top along with a few gradients, lines to indicate the falling of the clothes, and finally some terminated lines creating a contrast between the light and shadows. And last but not least I had to shadow glow things, and honestly the highlights present in the original McCoy drawing was by far the most confusing element to me. So I ended up by just doing some basic geometric shapes to indicate some sort of random light patterns, which ended up looking decent enough. Although looking back I would probably have tried doing some extra research around proper lighting techniques, along with manually setting up exactly where the light sources for the drawing would have come from, to get more accurate light and shadow locations. But all in all I'm actually pretty satisfied with how the illustration turned out despite all the initial trouble I had getting the anatomy down. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and even maybe gotten a little better understanding of how the Persona 3 Reload art style is constructed. And of course a huge thanks to all the other art show channels this project was inspired by. You're all amazing.